Shalom and greetings, my friends and family. In this here little video, we're going to dive into a controversial topic that's been popping up more and more these days. Something that many are wrestling with. The whole concept of gender identity. And especially in light of the transgender movement that's gaining so much attention. Now some might argue that the Bible doesn't really touch on this issue, pointing out that there isn't a verse that says, Thou shalt not transition from a man to a woman. And sure, there are no verses directly talking about things like gun violence, anorexia, waterboarding, fossil fuels, vaccines, GMOs, HMOs. But just because the Bible doesn't use the 21st century language, doesn't mean it's silent on these matters. Actually, the Bible has quite a bit to offer when it comes to understanding gender and identity, even if it's not spelled out exactly the way we talk about it today. If we're following Yeshua and we believe that the Bible is unbreakable, then we can find a solid foundation in Scripture for understanding who we are as male and female. So let's break this down. Male and female, that's the starting point. He created them male and female in Genesis 1.27. He made the woman to be a complement and help to the man in Genesis 2 verses 18 through 22. The two become one flesh in Genesis 2 verses 23 and 24. First off, the Bible only recognizes two genders, male and female. This isn't just some old school thinking. It's right there in the creation story. When God made humans, he created them as male and female. This wasn't a random decision. It was part of God's awesome design for us. Men and women are different, and that's a good thing. It's all about how they complement each other. The Bible sticks with these two categories, male and female, throughout its teachings. Even in situations that seem like they might blur the lines, like with intersex individuals or eunuchs, the Bible still holds to the ideal of male and female. These are seen as part of the world's brokenness, not as new gender categories. So what about gender identity? Following Christ means dying to ourselves. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Being renewed in our minds. In Romans 12 and 2. And no longer walking as we once did. In Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 and 18. Male and female are uniquely the type of pair that can reproduce in Genesis 1.28 and Genesis 2.20. It's why homosexuality, a man lying with a man as with a woman, in Leviticus 18.22, is wrong. It is why the Apostle Paul can speak of homosexual partnerships as deviating from the natural relations or natural function of male-female sexual intercourse in Romans chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Now, some folks might say, okay, I get that God made us male and female, but what about people who feel like their gender doesn't match their biological sex? This is a real struggle for a lot of people, including some believers. They might feel like they can only be their true selves by living as the opposite sex. But here's the thing, while our feelings are real and important, they are not the final word on how we should live. The Bible teaches us to follow God's design, even when it's tough or goes against what feels right in the moment. We're called to live according to God's plan, not just what seems right to us. In God's design, there's a connection between our biological sex and our gender identity. The Bible doesn't separate these two. That's why it speaks out against things like same-sex relationships and highlights the unique pairing of male and female as the foundation 
for family and community. So, staying true to God's design, men should not act sexually as women. Leviticus 18 and 22, Romans 1, 18 through 32, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. That men should not dress like women, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. And that when men and women embrace obviously other gendered expressions of identity, it is a disgrace. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 and 15, we do not have an inalienable right to do whatever we want with our physical selves. We belong to God and should glorify Him with our bodies. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. If we believe that God created us as male and female, and that these identities are meant to match our biological sex, then it makes sense that anything confusing this reality isn't what God wants for us. That's why the Bible talks about men and women living out their gender in a way that honors God's design. It's not about restricting us, it's about living in the way that God knows is best for us. We're God's creation, and our bodies are meant to glorify Him. This means embracing our God-given identity, even when it's hard or goes against what the culture is pushing. So let's bring it all together. This is a complicated topic with a lot of layers. We need to approach it with love and truth. Our goal isn't to push people away, but to create a community where everyone is welcome to discover the life God has for them. We want to love and support those who are struggling with their gender identity while also staying true to what the Bible teaches us about being male and female. As believers, let's keep these truths close, not just for our own understanding, but so we can share them with others in a loving way. Our identity as male and female isn't just a minor detail. It's a key part of God's beautiful plan for each of us. I'd like to thank you for joining me here today. I look forward to hearing from you down in the comments. And until next time, Remember, Yeshua loves you. So do I. Now get off of here, go ride your bike, and read your Bible. Shalom, shalom.